here we are boarding the server 2012 uh, I will change the resolution to uh, uh, 1080p so it's easier to see so uh, here we can just open uh, CPU-Z version 1.88 it actually it's for some reason it's very slow or not responding yeah now it's loading so we can see that we are running Core i9 9900K revision or stepping RO uh, with or at 5.2 GHz the uh, CPU voltage isn't reading correctly again but it's 1.3 uh, set B core and also uh, since we are using minus 50% uh, V droop option it's always a little bit set or a little bit over the set value when it goes under load you can use the onboard, onboard debug LED to monitor the V core accurately but I have already tested the setting or the load line calibration setting so I don't have to monitor that right now so uh, we can open core temp and uh, CD bench R15 and we can do a quick test run at 5.2 GHz idle temps were around 26, 27 and the uh, core maximums are around like lower 60s to mid 60s when we are running this 5.2 GHz at 1.3 volts the score is 2277 so it's pretty good uh, as a uh, it, so it's a pretty good starting point so we can open e-lead again we can raise the uh, cache to 4.8 and raise the uh, core speed to 5.3 we can hit apply and if we look at cpu z it's reading 5.3 gigahertz 4800 on the cache 4133, 17, 18, 18, 28, command rate 2 on the memory. So now we can run 5.3. And we have to remember that this crashed last time with the 9900KF with exactly 1.3 volts. The uh, RO stepping 9900KF required close to 1.35 for 5.3 GHz. So this is already improving, or oh, this is already doing better than that uh, particular. Uh, 9900 kf so uh, we can also see that the temperatures went up a little bit due to the uh, increase in the core speed so uh, now we can open e-lead again and we can test 5.4 gigahertz but it's probably quite on the edge with this particular uh, voltage so 5.4 on cpu z And it crashed. It requires a little bit more on the uh, uh, V core in order to pass this. These CPUs are quite funny uh, as a whole because they, uh, the ambient air temperature or the temperature overall has so big impact. So that if I could drop my uh, room temperature by like five degrees, it would improve my clock speeds quite a lot in general. So uh, now we can open Elite. We can open Elite, make sure that the uh, V core is set at override. We can go to uh, core voltage and set 1.32, and it will increase our V core a little bit. Actually, this can monitor the V core accurately, so it's reading 1.323. We can open core tempo, and also we have to increase the clock speed of course so 4.8 and 5.4 let's try again at 5.4 gigahertz with a little bit more on the v core oh it crashed again but yeah 
so let's try again. The best I have done with this particular chip was 5.5 uh, GHz with 1.38 set Vico, but that was of course with relatively cool room temperature, like only 18 degrees in, inside the room. Now the room temperature is 24 degrees, so it's 6 degrees above uh, that particular uh, temperature. So, uh, yeah, the temperature affects so much with these particular uh, CPUs. So, uh, it will be normal that you might not uh, reach the same speed during hot summer compared to a cold winter, for example. So, uh, you have to uh, pay attention to that when you when you are trying to find the uh, best possible speed with these particular CPUs. So now we, let's try 1.34 set on the Vico and same on the uh, same clock speeds on the CPU again. And uh, let's try to pass Cinebench once one more time. So the clock core speed or the core temperatures are already around 70 degrees it's quite a lot so it's not easy to pass 64 73 the variation is quite high and the score wasn't good so it's only 23 44 but it did pass it can be already seen from uh, core temp 5.4 or 2 so 5.4 passed so 5.5 uh, is doable with this particular CPU, but it requires quite high VCO and it requires colder uh, room temperatures. Room temperatures, so this might be very hard to pass. Uh, let's see if I set CD bench uh, to real time and try to run the uh, R15 test again. See if the score improves at all. So yeah, just one point under 2400. It's a good score for sure. The uh, it's normal that the uh, image rendering hangs when you set the benchmark to run in uh, real time. It's absolutely normal. So uh, now we can try to run 5.5 gigahertz, although it will be really, really hard to pass. I will set 1.42 on the V-Core and 5.5. .5. And I'll try to run this test without CPU-Z or core temp running, but uh, as I already as I already said, the temperature has greater impact on stability than voltage on the CPU. So uh, I will get more benefit by dropping the temperatures if I can do that. For example, getting the room temperature cooler than by raising the vehicle. The uh, uh, voltage scaling goes quite bad after like 1.35. So uh, there's not much I can improve by raising the vehicle. So uh, it's very likely that this will not pass, but we can still try it anyway. So it, it crashed. Yeah. The uh, best CPU that I ever had was the uh, chip that did 5.5 gigahertz with only 1.335 set vehicle, but that was also with a maximum core temperature reading of 62 degrees. So that is extremely low. Uh, if I had those temperatures, I would easily pass 5.5 gigahertz with like 1.35 to 1.38 set vehicle right now. But the temperature is limiting me quite a lot, so I cannot uh, pass that easily right now. I can try it one more time. So we can try 1.445 on the vehicle. Oh, I forgot. So uh, 5.5, 4.8, and if we open the monitor tab, it will read 
1.447, 1 1.45 on the vehicle. Yeah, so it's not going to pass due to high temperatures. But anyways, this is already quite good result. The uh, other crazy good CPUs from uh, by pool shooter, for example, they don't do that good on water as well, just because of the high temperatures. So now we can try how high validation I can do with this CPU, uh, or how high frequency we can see on the desktop so if we raise voltage to let's say 1.46 monitoring is, is uh, showing the vehicle accurately and if we just raise to 5.5 straight away boom we can see 5.5 on the on CPU-Z 4.8 on, on the cache 4133 cache 17 on the memory 5.6 yeah 5.6 on CPU-Z 5.7 on uh, CPC still running and let's try 5.8 but this will uh, crash for sure no well it did it did run it for like a second or two but it will do that if we raise the voltage a little bit I managed to get uh, validation at 5.8.24 actually when I tried second time. So uh, let's try so 5 5.7, 5.8, 5.8.13. So this is what I, this was my max the previous time, 5 and 30, so. So yeah, the file appeared there, 5 and 30. So that's the max, so yeah, 5 and 30. It doesn't really uh, go much more than that, even though I disable cores or hyperthreading. So, anyways, it's screwed. The, there was no 2600K or any Sandy Bridge GPU that could get this high uh, core frequency on water cooling at this kind of voltage. There were some CPUs that could validate 5.7 on water cooling, but that, but that required like 1.65 on the vehicle. So that's a lot more when it comes to voltage. Oh well, so uh, I tried again to run uh, the 5.5 GHz even with 1.42 uh, V core, but the temperatures are my issue. The uh, core temperatures are uh, raising around uh, to like around 80 degrees, so it's too much for this CPU to pass. That CPU, that's that core frequency is stable. So if I had the same temperatures like under 70 degrees, it would pass very very easily it crashes at around like 50 percent uh, during the, of the test so it goes halfway through the r15 and then it crashes so uh, it's a no-go but still uh, 5.8 gigahertz is very nice so uh, uh, that's pretty much that's how the that's how this particular arrow stepping 9900k overclocks this is a very nice chip in the end when it can do 5.4 quite happily it's very rare to find a 5.4 GHz uh, capable uh, 
a core CPU. So uh, the next thing that I will try is that I will lap the CPU IHS because even this seems to run a little bit harder than the uh, 5.5 1.335 uh, chip. So I will try to lap the CPU IHS uh, against a mirror uh, with very thin, or I mean up up to even very uh, fine sandpapers to make it like a mirror finish and see if I can improve the, tem the temperatures like a few degrees, like from two to five degrees. We will see as it should help the uh, stability of uh, of the CPU. So we can. I will use my uh, uh, I will use my 5.2 gigahertz uh, daily profile uh, to compare the temperatures. So now we are running. Now we are running the uh, 5.2 gigahertz profile just as is, uh, and. Uh, we can see the room temperature is around 24 degrees, so uh, the core temps are going, the highest temperature is 66 degrees, so the average is probably like 60, I will calculate that uh, accurately of course. So uh, I will use this uh, as a starting point and then I will compare the lapped result against this, but yeah. If you like to see this video, if you like to see how the arrow stepping 9900K overclocks, like how we got it to 5.8 GHz even on just desktop, then leave, please give a thumbs up. These CPUs will be available in the retail stores soon, if not already. The, these will just silent, uh, silently replace the older PO stepping CPUs. Uh, the RO stepping CPUs will be made uh, during 2019, as all the PO stepping ones are pretty much all 2018 CPUs. So uh, when you start to see very new uh, batch, uh, batched 9900K or 9900KF chips, it's very likely that they are RO stepping. So go to check those out. You might get a little bit better CPU on average than compared to the PO stepping. But anyways, these are pretty much the same. And we will see how, uh, and we will see if we find even better CPUs than the currently, than the current world's best uh, chips uh, among these. But yeah, if you like this video, then please give a thumbs up. I will provide a link for the uh, better BIOS I'm using down in the description below. And uh, thanks for watching this video again. And uh, subscribe to my channel. And uh, see you next time.